chapters. My name is Ben, BVH Nightmare, whatever you like to call me by. Today we're going to be looking at the modular driven technologies, Oryx chassis. So who am I? Why should you give a shit about my opinion? I shoot the Wisconsin Precision Rifle Steel Challenge match up here in Wisconsin at the Highland Sportsman's Club. Uh, we hold monthly matches from April till October, about seven or eight matches, give or take, monthly matches. And uh, we just held our finale a couple weekends ago. Overall in the season, I had a, had a fourth place, a fifth place finish. And uh, when all the shots were fired and scores were tallied, I placed 16th um, out of roughly 250-ish shooters. And first place in our military and law enforcement division. So what is this chassis bolted to? It's a Remington 700 stainless steel true to action from Northland Shooter Supply. The trigger is a Timney Calvin Elite two-stage trigger set at about one and a half pounds. The barrel is a Criterion 26 inch M2 Contour 6.5 Creedmoor barrel and a little bastard Gen 2 brake. On the uh, fore end of the rifle, this changed about, two th or about one third of the way through the season. I decided to put an Area 4 419 Arca rail on it with a B&T Atlas bipod and Area 419's Arca, Arca lock adapter. Can't forget about Vortex. So we're gonna start from the rear of the chassis and go forward. The rear of the chassis has a uh, very nice rubber, soft, textured butt pad. I have no complaints or, yeah, that's about as easy as you can say it. No complaints about the butt pad. Length of pull adjustment. Length of pull is used uh, via spacers. This is a pretty common tactic for a lot of budget chassis or a lot of budget options nowadays. I've got two spacers here. I did modify these uh, and hollowed them out and put a uh, shot in these to make the rear of the rifle a little bit more heavier. Your cheek piece. Your cheek piece is adjusted by two bolts right here and that you use a small Allen key and that allows your cheek piece to go up and down. Set it, forget about it. If this is not a shared rifle, I haven't moved this cheek piece since the start of the season. Moving, uh, also you should note that the, uh, the chassis has got these uh, protective plastic covers. I think it makes the gun look like something straight out of Halo. That's a plus for me because I like Halo. Moving forward, you've got your pistol grip. Pistol grip takes basically any AR-15 style of uh, pistol grip. The one that it came with is completely adequate, but it's a, an angled pistol grip. I'm more of a 90 degree shooter myself, so I swapped it out when Ergo came out with their 90 degree pistol grip. Moving along the chassis just above the pistol grip, you've got these awesome thumb rests. They're built into both sides of the rifle, and that's my preferred way of shooting precision rifle. Push your thumb right there. They're very smooth, no sharp edges, perfectly radius, super, super comfy. Your trigger well. Your trigger well is plenty wide. Um, I would see no issue fitting one of Timney's wide 510s in there. And uh, like I said, my Timney uh, Calvin Elite's in here. It fit with no issues. The trigger pocket is super wide and you should have no issues fitting a multitude of triggers in there. Bix and Andy, Trigger Tech, Timney, Huber, pick them, you should be able to fit it in there. Moving forward from the trigger guard, you've got your magazine release. This was a slight issue that I originally didn't like about the chassis, but overshooting, after shooting it for this entire season, I like that the, the, the magazine uh, release itself is kind of tucked up under here. So it's, very, it's easy to get to when you're looking for it, but it's really hard to unintentionally um, hit that magazine release. Take standard Accuracy International chassis system magazines. Here I've got a Magpul. Um, this is a unmodified Magpul magazine. It fits just fine. Feeds just fine from the action. There's no bolt dragging on an empty magazine. And zero issues there. I did not run any of the actual steel Accuracy International mags. I have no experience on the metal versions of those. Going forward, you've got more of the plastic coverings protecting the outside of the chassis along the entire length of the chassis. And then you've got your flat forend, which has multiple slots of M-Lock. Attached to that, I have an Area 419 Arca rail. I decided to go with Arca about 
maybe a, a third of the way through the season because I wanted more adjustability in the chassis. Goes to the end, and that's it. That's the whole quick overview of the chassis. Like I said earlier, this is an MTU contour barrel profile, and you have tons of room left over for longer barrels. This barrel is actually going to be going on my fiance's rifle, and I'm going to be getting a bull barrel for next season to go on here for a little bit more weight up front. You've got tons of room. Now Oryx offers, at least when I bought it, this chassis with a 30, it's either a 30 or 60 day try and buy, or buy and try program. You can buy the chassis, try it out, and if you don't like it, you can send it back for a full refund. I tried it, loved it, and I've been shooting it this entire season. Um, as far as competitive options goes, uh, the, there's a company called Graybo. They've got very well competitively priced chassis. I actually, this rifle was in a Graybo chassis before I switched over to this. Those chassis are com more uh, competitively priced in this price range. And you've got other options, maybe like Bell and Carlson, and some offerings from KRG with their Bravo chassis, which is actually on the fiance's rifle. A couple of the cons that I found with the chassis. One, they've made it a weight that is a good overall weight. Uh, just like the ACC chassis, you can make that chassis 26 pounds if you want or super light if you want. They've made this chassis basically right down the middle of the road. So if you want to use it as a chassis for hunting or a chassis for PRS or tactical style of shootings, you can. The downside to that is you have an overall relatively light rifle. So what I've had to do is add steel shot to the rear of the rifle and the pistol grip to make the rifle a correct weight that I want. Another con that I found is you only get one QD cup um, connection point right here in the stock. There's no offerings up front in the rifle. I have sent Oryx messages before and I've never gotten a reply. I'm sure coming up here, if these take off, the aftermarket might pick up and you might get aftermarket mounting options on the fore end. If you're looking for a chassis that has um, extreme modularity, this isn't it. It's basically bare bones what you get. You get one flush cup in the rear, non toolless adjustment, you get M lock on the bottom, no places for M lock on the sides. If you can get over those things, it's a great chassis. And once you get it set up for yourself, like I have right now, you're done. All I'm going to be changing is, is the barrel on this for next season, and that's it. Pros, it's 400 bucks. Some other chassis, even if you somehow get like a 50% off coupon, you're still running 600, 800, sometimes thousand dollars for somebody's chassis. Not everybody can afford that. This is a great budget offering from MBT and they, they really, I think in their, my opinion, hit it out of the park with this offering. Anyways, be safe, be deadly, have a good one.